Hello guys, this is Adil. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics and lot of ortho topics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes and also put out daily MCQs with which you can brush up your biomechanics. The reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out and let's get started. In this video, I am going to talk about the forces and the vectors. This is going to be one of those videos where I talk about the core concepts so that it's easier for us when we talk about the more complex topics in the joints. So this is the basic forces and vectors of physics that I'll be talking about. Then I'll take some examples and we'll see how we resolve vectors at the joints. Okay. So let's start with the force. So what is a force? Force is a push or a pull on an object. Now when you convert this into a formula, you get F equals M into A, right? M is the mass of the object over here and the push and the pull over here becomes the acceleration. So push or pull on the object is force, which is measured in Newtons, right? Now if you take a more practical approach to it, you can say the weight that we see is the mass of our body into the acceleration that is the earth's gravitational pull on us that is the 9.8 g right so this we all know and it's pretty basic now let's move ahead and we'll see how vectors and forces are related now vector is basically something that gives direction to the quantity right so force vector over here is basically if you have an object over here and if i'm talking about a force vector it will give us three things when we denote it so over here, this object is being pushed in this direction. So if I take rubber and I'm pushing it in that direction, so rubber is going. So when we talk about force vector, it will tell us three things. That is where the force is being applied. So the point of start is where the force is being applied on the object. Then the length of the arrow will tell us how much force is being applied. More the magnitude, longer the arrow will be. And then it will also tell us the direction of the force. Okay, so that is the force vector. So now over here, if you have noticed, the force is being applied over here. Now, how do we know that when I'm pushing the object, where exactly the force is being applied? So this is where the concept of center of mass or center of gravity, when we talk about gravity, comes into play. This I will be talking about in a future video where I'll be covering center of mass, COM, COG, also line of gravity and also base of support and stability. I will be talking about all these concepts together in the future video. So we'll keep that aside, but just uh, keep in mind that center of mass is where the force is normally applied on, on an object. Okay. So keeping that in mind, let's go ahead, look at the force system. Now, what is force system? When there is more than one force involved in the system or in the picture, we use force system to find out what exactly the final force on that object would be. Basically what I mean is if this is the rubber or the object and if I'm pushing the rubber in this direction and if someone else is pushing it in this direction and the third person is pushing it in this direction, where will the rubber go in the end? That is what we are talking about. So when there is more than one force that is involved in the picture, we see, we always look at the force system. Now there are two types of them. There is a linear force system and also the concurrent force system. Linear force system exists when the forces are collinear and coplanar. Now co over here means same. So when the forces are present in the same plane and in same line, okay, same plane, planar and linear is line in the same line. This is when the linear force system is applied. So if you see over here, I've given two examples. So the first example, if you see the arrow is pushing in that direction and then there's another force that is pushing in the other direction. So if you see they are in the same line, like same line and they are also in the same plane. So when you consider both these forces, basically the force which is going in this direction will be cancelled out by the bigger force which is coming in this direction and the final force will be in the downward direction, right? So the final force will be in this direction. So that is basically simple 
addition and subtraction that we see so basically the bigger force minus the smaller this side force will give you a final force which is coming in this direction okay which will be comparatively smaller so that's what we see in linear force system that if these lines when they are extended they'll overlap each other right and then you do uh, basically addition or subtraction of these forces and you get the final force now these forces can be again seen into two types there is a compressive and the distractive force so basically compressive is when two forces will be coming towards each other and distractive will be going away from each other both of them will subtract each other right and if they are in the same direction they'll add each other that's simple right so that's how the linear force system works okay so this is the second example of the distractive force now going to the concurrent forces now this is where things get a little interesting this was plain simple physics till now over here also this is even simple but uh, you need to see and visualize how the forces act over here okay so now i'll take the first example over here before that concurrent force system it works if the vectors are not collinear and coplanar that means when the vectors won't be in the same plane or when they won't be in the same line that's when your concurrent force system is used to figure out where exactly the final force will be now what do i mean by this if i take my rubber over here uh, we were talking about the forces in the same line right now let us talk about forces in different line so if there is one force which is pushing the rubber in this direction that is basically if i hit the rubber okay it's going in that direction right and then if i hit the rubber it's going in that direction okay so these two forces one force pushing the rubber to the right and another force pushing the rubber to the left right when i combine both these forces what will happen they are not in the same line right so how do we find out where exactly will the rubber go so if i do this the rubber goes straight now how do we exactly find out and quantify this this is where the concurrent force system comes into play now we'll see that with our first example over here so over here if you see there is a weight that is attached to the foot and the weight is pulling the foot down now just because there is a weight which is attached and it's pulling it down your foot won't, won't just go down right it will be held in place by all the structures like the skin the ligaments and also the capsule now in this particular example we are taking the capsule into the consideration okay so what will happen is there is the capsule over here on the anterior side okay and also there is a capsule over here on the posterior side now these two capsules will resist the downward force of the weight of the leg and the weight that is the gravity's force will be resisted by both these capsules so that force is denoted over here if you can see over here and over here so i'll name them that is the anterior capsule force that is f and posterior capsule force okay so this is the anterior capsule force and posterior capsule force now these are the two forces that are resisting the downward force now how do we come up with a final force of both these forces that are being applied by the capsule so this is where the concurrent force system comes into play so what do we do is over here we use a parallelogram method to figure out where the resultant force will be of both these two force as we saw the same as the rubber being pushed to the right and left and we found that the rubber was going straight right when the two vectors were resolved so same way we'll do it over here also so basically what you do is you first start extending the line backward okay so i'll start extending it backward and even this one so then you find a point of origin over here where sorry not point of origin point of intersection where both the forces meet now from here what you do is you draw a parallel line to this line okay to this force you draw a parallel line so the, and that line will start from your other force okay so this would be your parallel line to this right the anterior capsule force there's a parallel line to that and then to the posterior capsule force over here there is another parallel line that i'm drawing imaginary line again 
so if you see they meet over here right and then if you take the pen and then draw a straight line which which basically joins both the ends and form a parallelogram this would be a resultant force similar to the rubber that we had seen right so basically this is called as the parallelogram method where you draw parallel lines to both the forces over here and you get a parallelogram which will give you the resultant vector that is upward so when you cancel this vector with this vector you basically keep your foot in the same position and that is the answer for your question right so that is the final force which has been resolved from the two anterior and posterior capsule force right so now let us go to another example over here now here what we will be doing is we will be taking the final vector first okay so this is the final vector that we are talking about by the way this is your humerus and there is the deltoid deltoid if you can see over here which is present around your humerus now this deltoid pulls your humerus upward right it has this final resultant force now this final force can be divided into two forces again like just like over here how we uh, took the two forces and combined into it into one force over here the final force can be divided into two forces that is a parallel force so i'll write over here parallel force and perpendicular force okay so per parallel force and the perpendicular forces are the two forces you can divide this one force into so now what is a parallel force now this deltoid is acting on your humerus right and the humerus is object over here on which the force is being applied so now if you take this force if you want to find a parallel component and a perpendicular component to the final force it will be parallel to the object and perpendicular to the object now what do i mean by this this final force is over here right now when we are deriving the parallel and perpendicular component what we will do is we'll see the point of action of this force and from there we'll see what would be the force that would be perpendicular to this object right so that would be your perpendicular over here right because it's forming 90 degree with the humerus and what would be a force that would be parallel to the object so that would be your parallel would be over here like this going straight right up along the line of the humerus so now if you see if you draw a parallelogram this is your perpendicular force okay this is your perpendicular force so now if you draw parallel to this it would be over here and then if you draw parallel to this it would be over here and this is where you form a parallelogram right so that's how you find a perpendicular and a parallel component to any of the forces that we see now this is the last example that we are going to take that is at the knee joint this is your femur okay femur and this is your tibia this is your patella over here and patella tendon which is going and attaching to your tibial tuberosity now the pull on the tibia over here is in this direction right it's in this direction now again let's do the second way that we see so let's uh, divide the main vector into perpendicular and the parallel component right so over here where is the force being acted it is being acted on the tibia so the perpendicular and the parallel components will be perpendicular and parallel to the tibia okay so the first is the perpendicular force right so this is the point of action so i'll draw a perpendicular line which is perpendicular to tibia right so this is your perpendicular line and then your parallel line over here which is parallel to your femur, uh, tibia right so if tibia is in this direction it will be in the same line so that's where i draw the parallel line okay so now you have to just draw the parallelogram that we have seen over here so if you see this is the parallel line that i'm going to draw now and then parallel line to this one would be over here right so it formed a parallelogram and this is how you resolve the vectors okay this is basically you divide the vector into two components 
and we saw how you take the two components draw parallel to both the components and find the resultant vector so that's all i wanted to cover in this topic basically how you resolve the vectors and you might ask now why is it important so the importance of this can be clearly seen at the knee joint kinematics shoulder joint kinematics i have discussed about this in the shoulder dynamic stabilization why it is so important you can clearly see how it is being used to find out what are the forces that are acting on the joint and how are the muscles acting at different ranges of the joint so this is where the concept comes into play and it's very important concept so do get comfortable with the concept take few more joints and see how the forces act on these joints so with that i'll conclude the topic uh, and before that i would like to ask you a small question what would be the perpendicular and the parallel forces for this one can you imagine so over here the object is here and then the force is being applied like this so this is your perpendicular component if you see right we already have a perpendicular component for this object and what would be the parallel component there is no parallel component because if you take a parallel component the force will start going upward right upward it will start going upward because parallel component will get the this like this force upward correct so we don't have a parallel component over here it's just a per perpendicular component which is working and that's why the force is just going in the one direction right so with that we finish up this topic now let's summarize we talked about the forces f equals ma or w equals m into g then we saw how vector can tell us three things that is where the force is being applied how much magnitude of force is being applied and also what direction it is being applied in then we saw when there is more than one force involved in the force system we either choose linear or concurrent force system based on whether they are collinear and coplanar if they are in the same line and in the same plane we can just do simple addition or subtraction and find out the resultant force but if they are not in the same plane and the same line we have to use the parallelogram method to find out the resultant force and sometimes when we have the resultant force we can divide it into perpendicular and the parallel component and find out which component is bigger and how the forces are exactly acting okay so with that we finish up the topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please like the video as it really helps me out and also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover i'll see you soon in the next video